The TypeScript 5.2 beta was just announced the other day, and I thought it'd be fun to take a read through the blog post and talk about some of the things that I'm excited about in this upcoming release. The biggest one is definitely using declarations and explicit resource management. It's interesting to me that TypeScript is doing this because it's mainly a upcoming JavaScript feature and doesn't feel like a type thing so much. This gives us a way to manage cleanup of particular resources in JavaScript. The example they use here is file management. You need to open a file to read or write to it. And when you're done, you need to close off that file handler and release that resource. It can be tricky to do that properly. You may just put that logic at the end of your usage of that file, but then if there are other conditions that might cause you to return early, you need to make sure that you're cleaning up your usage of those resources in those places too. Now you could also do this type of thing with a try finally block. What's really cool about this is a finally block is always executed even if your try has a return in it. But try finally kind of adds a little bit of complexity to your code that maybe you'd like to abstract in some way. And so what we have in TypeScript 5.2 is this disposable type which we can implement. And as part of that, you include this new method which is symbol.dispose. And in the symbol.dispose method, you can declare all of your cleanup logic. Now this abstraction could be used with the try finally syntax that we already saw, right? So you can have your try and then just call that dispose method in your finally. However, what we're getting with TypeScript 5.2 is this using keyword, which you will use in place of let or const to actually declare this file variable. However, what happens now is whenever this variable goes out of scope and is garbage collected, the cleanup logic will be run. All of this is really just making it really easy for you to do good teardown or cleanup of your objects. Now, the example that they're using here is both logging and then like file related. One example that I'm excited to play around with this in is the idea of an object pool. The idea of an object pool is that when your program begins, you instantiate a bunch of objects of a particular type, and then you can reuse those objects throughout the execution of your program, instead of creating an object when you need it and then allowing garbage collection to take it. By adding a dispose method like this to these objects, you can then allow those to be cleaned up and properly returned to the pool and then reused later on. And this way you limit garbage collection. If you can control those objects, then none of them will ever be garbage collected. I know some folks in game development who are really excited about about this TypeScript feature. This gives them a really nice abstraction for managing some of the many objects that you have when you're doing game development. So using declarations and explicit resource management like this are gonna be really, really cool, I think. And of course, besides this disposable interface, we also have async disposable so that you can work with async logic in your dispose function. So very, very cool stuff. The next big feature of TypeScript 5.2 is also an upcoming ECMAScript feature, and this is decorator metadata. This is interesting because when you create a decorator, you have access to this context object Object. And now we have this new metadata field on that context object, which gives us a place to store data across all usages of this particular decorator. In the example here, you can see that they're creating this set metadata decorator, which we're calling on these three different fields in some class. If we pull that metadata out of that class using symbol.metadata, then you can see we have references to each one of them, bar, baz, and foo. And we've done that by setting context.name, which is bar, baz, and foo, on context.metadata. Metadata could be attached for lots of uses like debugging, serialization, or dependency injection. I haven't played too much with decorators in TypeScript myself yet, but it's interesting to see that they're adding features to decorators because TypeScript introduced stage three decorators in just version 5.0, I think, so just a couple versions ago. So it's cool to see that they're adding new features to decorators, and I think we'll probably see more libraries taking advantage of some of these cool features as they continue to become more and more powerful. I love this example of a serializer library that has a serialized decorator. As you can see, we're using it on age and full name. And then we also have a JSONify function function that you can pass this object to. And the idea here is that this JSONify function will be able to share the metadata of the serialized decorator. As you can see in our serialized decorator here, it's pretty simple. On context, we can check to see if this is a static or a private field. We can't serialize those. We also can't serialize something that's a symbol. But if it isn't any of those things, then context.name, which is the name of our field, we can just keep track of that in context.metadata.serializables where serializables here is just a symbol we can use to keep track of those fields on our metadata. In JSONify, we can find the constructor of whatever object we're trying to stringify, get the metadata out of that, grab the prop names, and then we can map over those prop names, getting the keys and the values and creating our JSON value. So this seems like a pretty powerful feature that I'm excited to play around with some more. All right, there's some handy improvements around how named tuples work. We've got some easier method usage for unions of arrays. This was an interesting one to me. I didn't realize this was a problem 
problem. But if you had a union of array types, so an array of strings or an array of numbers, it's hard to have a strongly typed filter function here because the filter function of these two different arrays has very different signatures. One expects the argument to be a string, the other expects it to be a number. Now, instead of TypeScript treating this as a union of string array or number array, it's gonna treat it as an array of string or number. And so you'll be able to do a properly typed predicate to functions like filter. The last two things on this list are related specifically to, I guess you would say the language server piece, comma completion for object members. Notice in the example here, if we add a property red, but then we don't add the comma after it, same with green here, when we go to the next line and try to do autocomplete, previous versions of TypeScript, you can't get good autocomplete with that missing comma. It's a syntax error. Now TypeScript recognizes what you're trying to do and not only gives you autocomplete on these property names, but it also automatically inserts that comma for you. Just a small optimization, but I love that they're thinking about the developer experience like this. The other one here is inline variable refactoring. This is pretty straightforward. As you can see on this path variable, now we have a code action to inline the variable. And so we can copy that value into both our open sync call here and then also our unlink sync call down here. I'd love to hear what features of TypeScript 5.2 you guys are excited about. For me, it's definitely using declarations and I'm sure you'll see some videos on those coming up on this channel in the next couple of weeks. So keep an eye out for that. Let me know in the comments what you're excited about with TypeScript 5.2. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.